Within a ribbon microphone, like this Cloud 44, there's an extremely thin conductive ribbon suspended within a magnetic field. In this case, only 1.8 microns. For reference, a human hair is about 70 microns, more than 30 times thicker than the ribbon within each of these microphones. The low mass allows the ribbon to oscillate with even the slightest variation in sound pressure, making these microphones especially powerful in capturing fine details and quick transients in all sorts of recording situations. In a moment, I'll set up some demonstrations so that you can hear the sound of a ribbon microphone compared to the sound of a moving coil mic and a condenser mic. But first, let's take a closer look at the characteristics that make ribbon microphones so unique. Cloud Microphones sponsored this video by sending me these two microphones, the Cloud 44 and the Cloud 44A. We're going to get into the difference between these two mics later on in the video. Rather than the tightly stretched membrane of a condenser microphone or the high mass diaphragm within a moving coil microphone, ribbon microphones have a very lightweight element that moves sympathetically with pressure waves that surround it. That makes for a very natural sounding and detailed output that more closely resembles the sound within the room. They exhibit less distortion than moving coil mics and aren't overly bright, as is sometimes the case with condenser mics. The resonant frequency of a ribbon is also very low compared to the resonant frequency of a condenser microphone's capsule. So the phase shift that occurs at that resonant frequency is often low enough that it doesn't have adverse effects within the audible range. Also, the frequency response of a ribbon can extend down to about half of that resonant frequency, which tends to give ribbons a very flat frequency response in the lows. Take a listen to this recording of a guitar amp recorded with a ribbon microphone compared to a moving coil and condenser mic. As a guitarist, I love that ribbon microphones tend to faithfully represent the sound from the amp itself, the way I want it to sound. Many guitarists work very hard to achieve a specific tone and are thrilled when the microphone preserves that tone in the recording. You can hear that the ribbon has a warm and full-bodied quality compared to the additional bite that's captured with a dynamic or a condenser. These are often paired together, which gives the engineer more control to balance between these two qualities within the final mix. Instruments recorded with ribbons tend to sit more neutrally within a mix, which means you may find yourself needing to use less EQ and other processing to achieve the proper blend with other instruments. However, it's also commonly said that ribbon microphones take EQ very well, meaning that you can use additive EQ to enhance the tone of an instrument without encountering that nasty sibilance that you may hear when you employ this technique with a condenser mic. Right now, you're hearing the sound of my voice through the Cloud 44 ribbon microphone. I'm able to brighten up the high mids and highs with a high shelf, which means that there is energy in that frequency band, even if the highs are mellow straight out of the microphone. Transients in audio are the short instantaneous bursts of sound pressure that occur at the beginning of a sound. The way a microphone responds to transients is critical when recording percussive instruments like drums or plucked strings. The low mass nature of a ribbon allows it to very quickly respond to these transients. High mass moving coil mics tend to be slower to respond while low mass condensers can quickly respond but they're also said to sometimes exhibit overshoot, where the electrical output of the microphone at the peak of the transient is greater than the actual acoustical input. Overshoot can lead to an artifact called ringing. Ribbon microphones are an excellent choice when you want to capture transients while avoiding the brittle or piercing quality in the highs. Listen to this example of a tambourine recorded with each type of microphone and notice the full bodied and mellow nature of the ribbon mic. Thank you. 
This is one reason why I love to use a ribbon or a pair of ribbons as drum overhead mics. They help to mellow out the harshness while faithfully delivering the transients. Here's an example so you can hear what I mean. The ribbon is exposed on the front and the rear, so these mics and most ribbon mics have bi-directional or figure eight polar patterns. This means the microphone picks up sound evenly from the front and the back while rejecting sounds coming from the sides, the top, or the bottom. If I placed a speaker in front of the ribbon microphone and sent a signal that was a quick burst of positive sound pressure toward the ribbon, it might look like this on a graph. If I put the speaker behind the mic instead, the signal might look like this. These signals have inverse electrical polarity. When a sound wave approaches from the side, equal pressure is reaching each side of the ribbon simultaneously, which results in a complete cancellation. The output of the microphone reflects the difference between the two sides of the ribbon. This feature gives ribbon microphones excellent side rejection, which can help to isolate your recording from nearby instruments or noises. A figure eight polar pattern also offers control over room sound. The front of the mic picks up mostly direct signal from the sound source, while the rear of the mic picks up mostly indirect signal. So if you were recording an orchestra in a concert hall or a drum kit in a live room, you could control the blend of room sound by placing the microphone closer or further away from the source. One method that is especially powerful when using ribbon microphones is the Bloomline stereo microphone technique, where two microphones will be placed perpendicular to one another, with the left-facing mic panned all the way to the left and the right-facing mic panned all the way to the right. You can learn more about stereo recording in the full post on the Audio University website. Have a listen to this acoustic guitar track recorded right here in my bedroom. Close your eyes and listen to the fine details, the realistic dimension, and the room ambiance that can be achieved with just these two microphones. While it is true that some multi-pattern condenser microphones can offer bi-directional patterns, they do so using electrical circuits that may induce noise, distortion, or off-axis coloration compared to ribbon microphones, which are bi-directional by nature. Not only do ribbon microphones have extreme null point rejection, they also tend to have a more pleasing off-axis response for sounds that fall between 0 degrees on-axis and 90 degrees off-axis. This can make for a far more natural quality of leakage or bleed from surrounding instruments that might actually create cohesion in the mix rather than being seen as a pure nuisance. You can see here in this polar response graph that there's a fairly uniform drop off in level for each of these frequencies as the sound source moves off axis with the microphone. This isn't the case with all microphones. Almost every directional microphone is susceptible to the proximity effect, but ribbons are especially susceptible. 
The proximity effect is a boost in low frequencies when you place the microphone in close proximity to the sound source. As I get closer to the microphone, the low frequencies are more pronounced compared to when I move further away from the microphone. I have a full post on the proximity effect if you want to learn more about how it works. The proximity effect can be used to control the quality of the recording. If you want to thicken up the sound of a thin sounding instrument, move the mic closer to the source. If you want to achieve the radio announcer effect, move the mic closer. On the flip side, you can put more distance between the source and the microphone when you want to tame some excessive bass energy. The Cloud 44A actually has a music and voice switch that applies a high pass filter in voice mode to counteract the proximity effect when you want a close sound without the increased low end response. This is what it sounds like with the switch engaged. The lows are substantially reduced, allowing me to get closer to the mic without too much buildup. In music mode, the filter is bypassed and the microphone operates at its natural frequency response, which extends way down to the sub bass range. The uniquely low mass element employed by ribbon microphones also leads to a very low electrical output level and impedance. There's typically a transformer within the microphone that steps up the voltage to a usable level and increases the impedance. In the past, the magnets within a ribbon microphone was very heavy in order to achieve a strong enough magnetic field, but modern ribbon microphones like these utilize modern magnets and are therefore less massive. They still require about 65 to 75 dB of clean gain, which is no problem for the powerful preamps in my RME interface, but some interfaces with less powerful preamps may require an inline preamp, like the cloud lifter, to achieve the adequate level with passive ribbon microphones. The input impedance of a microphone preamp also impacts the sound when connecting a ribbon microphone. The lower the input impedance of the preamp, the more the ribbon will be damped, restricting its movement. You can hear the tonal effects of input impedance by using this Cloudlifter Z, which has a variable impedance knob. As I reduce the input impedance, the low frequencies are reduced, and the high frequencies may sound a bit dulled. Increasing the impedance fills out the full bandwidth of the microphone. There's also an effect on the overall level, which means that less or more preamp gain will be required, depending on the impedance. Using a passive ribbon microphone, like the Cloud 44, you can get different sonic characteristics by pairing it with different microphone preamps or by using Cloudlet for Z and experimenting with the input impedance knob. Connecting the mic directly to the preamp without a cloud lifter may bring out the character of the preamp while using the included cloud lifter may reduce the effects of the electronics within your mic pre. If you want a ribbon microphone that behaves a bit more consistently, you may want to choose the Cloud 44A, which is an active ribbon microphone. This microphone has a cloud lifter circuit built in, so sound will be less dependent on the microphone preamp you're using, and the output level will be similar to that of a condenser microphone. Ribbon mics are excellent for capturing a wide variety of instruments, including vocals, drums, brass instruments, woodwinds, strings, or anything else that calls for a mellow yet detailed texture and natural character. But just like any microphone type, condenser, moving coil, or ribbon, there are variations between each model of microphone, even within a given type. So it ultimately comes down to a case by case basis where you select the right microphone for the desired sound. There are a few additional safety measures that you'll want to be aware of when using a ribbon microphone. First, avoid sending phantom power to passive ribbon microphones like the Cloud 44. This could cause immediate damage to the microphone, especially if phantom power is engaged while you're connecting or disconnecting. To avoid this, I always use a cloud lifter between the output of passive ribbon mics and the input of my microphone preamp. This protects the microphone from phantom power reaching the ribbon. On the other hand, active ribbon microphones like the Cloud 44A require phantom power to operate, so phantom power isn't an issue. I also handle these microphones with much more care than I would a moving coil microphone. Modern ribbons like these are far more resilient than vintage mics, but I still handle ribbon microphones with a bit of extra care, as I would any expensive microphone. Vintage ribbons tend to have lower maximum SPL specifications, meaning that they can be more easily damaged by extremely loud pressure levels. But like I said before, modern ribbons are much more robust. Even these vintage style mics are capable of handling up to 138 dB SPL, which is in line with many condenser microphones. Just consider how loud the source will be at the given distance when using a ribbon mic. 
When recording a loud source, it's recommended to put a bit more distance between the mic and the source, and perhaps even turn the microphone slightly off axis. You may even use a pop filter to reduce the impact of sudden bursts of pressure. Never blow into a ribbon microphone, and never use one outside in windy conditions. I'd even recommend using the protective cover anytime you move the microphone from room to room, as the air pressure created by quick movements or gusts of air could unnecessarily put stress on the ribbon. It's even a best practice to store ribbon microphones upright rather than on their side so that the ribbon doesn't sag over extended periods of time. Otherwise, the ribbon may begin to shift toward the magnets. Throughout the course of my research for this video, I learned that the delicate nature of ribbon microphones is often overblown, especially with modern mics. I kind of enjoy it though, if I'm being honest. I love taking care of these mics and respecting their delicate nature. But if you simply treat these microphones with the same care that you would any expensive piece of gear, you'll probably be okay. What I love about these microphones is that they take the classic handmade ribbon design that you might find in a vintage mic, and they surround that design with innovative and modern technologies that make them more useful in modern recording studios. You can learn more about these mics using the links in the description below. In the next video that's on your screen now, we'll take a look at moving coil and condenser microphones. I'll see you there.